Hey guys, I am Dr. Anthony Gustin. And I'm Chris Irvin. And this is question 259 of 268 of our book, Keto Answers, which is detailing just that. 268 questions, everything you need to know about the ketogenic diet and detailed answers for all of them. All right, so the question that we're diving into in this video is, is what is the optimal blood ketone range? 10. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good to me. <laughs> Cut it. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, this is another one where it, it, it wildly depends. I think that the first thing we should think about is what is, I mean, what are we getting when we test the ketone range? Mm -hmm. Let's just assume that this means blood at this point, right? Yep. So there's a few different ways to measure ketones. One's through urine. You know, you get these little sticks and pee on them, turn a certain color that can indicate a certain range. Another one is you blow into a breath meter, and that spits out, you know, acetone readings. And then we have another one, which is the most accurate, is the beta hydroxy beta rate in your bloodstream. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, when we're testing our blood ketones, you'll see you know, a lot of the meters that are out there, they're very similar to blood glucose meters. You prick your finger, get a little drop of blood on the strip, it'll give you a reading that'll come in millimolars per deciliter. And you hear a lot of talk about what the optimal range is. Even when you look at research, you'll hear people say, you know, 1.5 to 3.0 millimolars is, is what we should be looking at. Um, but I think the really important thing to talk about, like you said, is what we're actually measuring when we're measuring our blood ketones. So the only thing that we're actually able to tell with that measure is how many ketones are present in our blood. And that's not enough information to tell us, to help us determine what the optimal ketone range yeah, is. Yeah, so it says nothing about, are those ketones going into your cells and are they being used for energy, mm -hmm. which is what we actually want to know. Yep. And there's no award, unfortunately, for the amount of ketones you have in your bloodstream. I'd be so, crushing you if there was. Yeah, I know, yeah, you would be, be crushing. You'd be slamming. Um, so if you go higher, if you go to two, three, four millimolars, it does not mean you're burning more fat. Mm -hmm. Doesn't that mean you're more keto? Doesn't that give you a keto crown? Mm -hmm. You're not a keto king or keto queen, unfortunately, sorry. It's a bummer. Uh, but what does that mean? It just means more floating around in your bloodstream. And mm -hmm. so when you're first adapting to a ketogenic diet, this number can go from you know, probably around zero if you were not in ketosis before, mm -hmm and spike up to 1.5 to even three in some cases. Your fasting will go this high as well. It's because you're you know, reducing all food and your body's just running on ketones. And then after a while, if you become keto adapted, that can start to level off and start to plateau at a much lower amount. And so for example, I don't know what yours is sort of at. Mine, mine when I first started, it was like 1.5, 1.8 around there. Mm -hmm. And now it ranges anywhere between 0.5 and 0.8. Yep. And the reason why is because my body is now taking those up and taking it out of the bloodstream and is more efficient at putting them in the cells mm -hmm. and not having a bunch of excess flowing around the, the bloodstream. Yep. So this is a dynamic measurement, you know, based upon what's going into your cells and what's not. So if you're exercising a lot, get a lot of muscle mass, like Chris, who's a giant savage, he's an ex-pro bodybuilder, ex, <laughs> ex and future body, bodybuilder. No. Um, more ketones are going in the muscles, yeah. meaning less ketones in your bloodstream. Mm -hmm. So this is sort of the range we're looking at. And so you, I mean, a lot of people that Google you know, what amount of ketones should I hit? And then they hit that was a the Finney and Volek yep. graph. Yep. And the graph pisses me off. Yeah. Because, I mean, it's just like people are like, oh, well, this is dangerous over here, and then this is minimum, I need to hit this thing right. here. It's like, it's, it depends, you know, depends yeah. on the person. Yeah, so what's going on here is, um, we, we've talked about this in some other videos too, is that uh, we have these transporters in our cells that are ro they're responsible for allowing ketones to enter the cells. So when you first start a ketogenic diet, you are producing a lot of ketones, but uh, those transporters aren't upregulated yet, so you have a lot in the blood. But as we, one of the things we know from research is that as we have elevated blood ketones, these transporters start to become more active. That allows ketones to come into the cells out of the blood, which is going in to, like this. so they're out here, just <laughs> <laughs> So obviously when that's going on, uh, that, you couldn't have given a better description, right? right? Like, exactly you guys how get it works. now, right? exactly how it works. <laughs> so um, obviously when they're going into the cells, we can't test that yet, and you're not gonna test that in your blood, so you're gonna start seeing uh, lower blood ketone levels, um, and you're also, your body's gonna become more efficient at producing what it needs and, and not producing a lot of excess ketones. So right. um, when we start talking about optimal ranges, we, we really can't know for sure. And I think a really easy way to look at it, for somebody to say that, you know, say 1.5 is the optimal blood ketone range, you can get to 1.5 by fasting for three days. It'd be pretty difficult to assume that you have achieved optimal ketosis in three days, right? So I don't think that, you know, I think that's kind of a telltale sign that there's so much more to this reading than just the blood ketones. And I actually think what we should be looking at more of is, you know, this isn't to say that we shouldn't be testing our ketones. There's a lot of value to testing your ketones, but I think a better thing to do is relate those numbers to a lot of your subjective feelings yep. and then try to determine within yourself what your most optimal ketone range is. Yeah, so maybe at zero you feel like crap, maybe at 0.3 you feel a little bit better, and then 
eight you feel the best. You don't notice any differences after that. Yep. So for me, actually, like taking exogenous ketones and bumping that level up to 1.5, 2.0, mm -hmm. well, I, like my brain works a lot better. Yep. And that's because there's a surplus of ketones in my bloodstream. They're being um, taken up by my brain preferentially, and I can do a little bit more work that mm -hmm. way. That's where I feel the most. I'm not going to get that, to that level unless I fast or take exogenous ketones. Mm -hmm. I don't want to fast for two days every time I want to work. Yep. Yeah, I think that's, that's exactly right. And that only comes from doing a lot of experimentation. Like if you want to, uh, you know, we're not sitting here telling you everybody needs to turn yourself into a human experiment, but if you want to find what's most optimal for you, like for us, we're always trying to figure out what is going to allow us to perform the best, you know, with our exercise, with the work that we're doing. Um, you know, for me, it's like researching, trying to get in a really good uh, mental flow for that. That's stuff that is only, you're going to determine that from doing a lot of self-experimentation. But I think um, as we'll get into in the book, so you guys are going to have to go check out the book for this one, I actually think that a much be better measure for us to be looking at is our blood glucose rather than our ketones because we can infer a lot more from that measure than we can blood ketones. Yeah. Question 269, bonus question. <laughs> What's the deal with blood glucose? You guys yeah. have to tune in and get the book. That's right. Get the book and you'll find out. If you're looking to simplify everything you need to know about the world's most confusing diet, head on over to Amazon.com and pick up Keto Answers today. The best part about it is that you're not just getting basic information. It's almost like you're getting a tiny little version of me and Chris shrunk down, put in your pocket to answer every question you have along your way. And that's not weird. It's beneficial. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best.